It's the Real News Network. I'm Greg Wilpert coming to you from Quito, Ecuador. It's been almost six months since Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico. While power has been restored to most of the island, rural areas are still without electricity. The government estimates that all power will be restored by May of this year, just in time for the start of the next hurricane season. Hurricane Maria caused an estimated $100 billion in damage, destroying nearly 400,000 homes with over 135,000 people fleeing to the U.S. mainland. Adding insult to injury, of the $23 billion pledged in disaster aid, so far only $1.3 billion have made it to the island, according to the Associated Press. Puerto Rico's governor recently presented a new fiscal plan that is supposed to bring about an economic recovery. A congressional hearing was held about this earlier this week, in which the co-director of the Center for Economic and Policy Re Research, Mark Weisbrot, testified. Let's take a look at, the short clip, at a short clip of what he had to say. This is an austerity plan. They use words like new government model and right-sizing and efficiency, but they're really talking about cuts in healthcare and education, in appropriations to the municipalities who are, you know, have to repair a lot of damage as well. And so, uh, this really can't work. This is the only place where this has been tried. You can look at Greece, you can look at the other countries in the Euros, and you can look at Jamaica not far away, which has been under IMF agreements uh, for decades and, and has had hardly any uh, growth in per capita. So that's the outcome you're going to get from trying to uh, shrink the economy, basically taking measures that will shrink the economy in order to squeeze out debt service. That's really what's, what's going on. Joining me to now talk about Puerto Rico's new fiscal plan is Mark Weisbrot. Thanks for being here today, Mark. Thanks, Gregory. So before we get into your analysis of uh, the uh, post-hurricane fiscal plan, give us a brief summary of what the uh, plan actually proposes to do and what it projects for the island's economic future. Well, they're projecting a, a big drop in growth for this year. Uh, and then five years of recovery, although the net uh, growth for the six years will actually be negative in real terms. But ironically, that's better than the last plan that they had in 2017. So somehow they're projecting that they're going to do better after the hurricane uh, than they did before when, you know, they were already, you know, before the hurricane hit, Puerto Rico was already... Uh, already had a decade of a lost decade really of no growth in income or GDP GNP is what they usually measure there for various reasons and so then the plan that they had the last last year before the hurricane guaranteed them another uh, 10 years and most likely more uh, without economic growth and then, of course, you had 10% uh, of the population left the island uh, before the hurricane. And this plan is projecting another 19% uh, uh, population loss over the next six years. So there's still no light at the end of the tunnel. And that's what I was saying in that uh, clip there, that this is a classic kind of austerity in the midst of recession with the added problem that they've, the, uh, the, Island has been enormously damaged by the hurricane. They haven't gotten anywhere near the aid that they need to re rebuild. And the population loss is a huge drag on demand that will also push the economy downward. So are you saying basically that the plan is, uh, despite its uh, relatively dire predictions, is not, um, how should I say, not uh, uh, realistic because uh, it, the, the economic impact will be even greater than what they estimate? That's right. Just like the last plan, it's really underestimating the length and depth of the recession uh, that is likely to, or the the fall in economic uh, output that's likely to happen. And just give us some of the details as to why that is. I mean, what kinds of austerity are they proposing, and uh, why is this going to be have such a major impact? Well, they have uh, over the next six years, they have about $13 billion in cuts in uh, health care, in education, in uh, what I mentioned, the allocations to the municipality. So this is what's really going to uh, 
this is really going to uh, hurt the economy. But I think the population loss is even worse. If you're not creating any jobs for people there, uh, people are going to leave, and especially given the conditions. And so uh, that's what's really uh, doing it. And so what do you think uh, needs to happen for Puerto Rico to truly recover? I think they have to have uh, an immediate stimulus. They have to focus on economic recovery first and then talk about whatever kinds of structural reforms they say are needed. And a lot of them are, are dubious. I think that's what has to happen. Uh, they have to rebuild and they have an opportunity to rebuild. They should be doing that. They can provide jobs in construction, for example. Um, and they're, you know, and rebuilding all of the lost infrastructure that they was already in bad shape even before the hurricane. So that's what has to be done first. And then they can talk and then and they're not going to be able to pay the debt. That's the other big thing, because they're trying to run and they're projecting which will never appear, but they're projecting a, a budget surplus of about 3.4 billion over the next six years, and that go, would go to debt service. So they're basically squeezing uh, the economy uh, and trying to impose this austerity in order to pay off debt, which is just completely unpayable. They have to recognize that, and they have to have debt cancellation. So uh, what do you make of the other uh, ideas in this uh, plan, such as the privatization schemes? Uh, one involves the uh, privatization of the uh, island's power company and another also of the, the school system, basically introducing uh, almost all charter schools for Puerto Rico. What do you think of that? Yeah, well, this is another example of taking advantage of this situation to get things uh, for you know, private corporations and, of course, the owners of the debt. Uh, I think that the privatization, they have some experience with. They privatized the uh, water and sewer uh, utility before, and it was a terrible disaster. Uh, they lost money on it. It didn't work. Um, and I think the privatization of electricity is another huge mistake. So just one more point, uh, you make the comparison uh, in your uh, testimony to uh, Greece, for example, which also was forced to uh, cut back in the midst of a recession. I'm just wondering, what is it about the economics of uh, the people who are proposing these things to believe that uh, you can continue to cut um, from, from, in other words, to, to impose austerity and still have economic growth when the experience, at least from Greece, Greece just shows the opposite. How do you explain that, that they keep uh, providing the same kind of recipes uh, and expecting a different result? Well, it's a good question. I mean, Greece, in a sense, this is much worse than Greece. I mean, Greece, the private bondholders had to take a haircut of 50 uh, percent. And in Greece, uh, well, they were doing other things. It wasn't really to try and squeeze debt service out of Greece so much as it was to force them to make these uh, reform, so-called reforms and, you know, that hurt people there uh, that people would never vote for, cuts in pensions and reduction in minimum wage and so on, which you know. Here, they're really trying to squeeze debt out of them in addition to making these uh, really unpopular reforms. And I think this can only happen because Puerto Rico is, is a colony. Uh, I mean, they don't have, if they were uh, an independent country, they could default on their debt like Argentina did in, at the end of 2001, and they would uh, recover and they, um, you know, and, and they would have their own currency uh, and their own central bank. If they were uh, even a state, they would have voting representation in Congress, they'd have like four representatives and uh, two senators, so they could get, you know, be treated like other U.S. citizens. Uh, you know, they got four years in here where they're not even going to get the normal uh, Medicaid uh, payment from the uh, federal government that the states get. That's billions of dollars there. Billions of dollars of their debt are a result of the not getting uh, the Medicaid that, that that states get. And again, there's no reason for that. They're U.S. citizens. Why shouldn't they get that? 
you know, this is the kind of thing. They're really treated completely differently because they're, they're a colony and disenfranchised and run by uh, people who they have no uh, accountability. The U.S. Congress, there's no accountability whatsoever uh, to, to Puerto Rico. Okay, well, we're going to have to leave it there for now. I'm sure we're going to come back to the issue a couple months from now, probably. I was speaking to Mark Weisbrot, co-director of the Center for Economic and Policy Research. Thanks for doing this today, Mark. Thank you. And I'm Greg Wilpert for The Real News Network.